Wow. Stumo, what is going on? Man, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get to speak to you guys. Uh, I was a CSU student myself. My name is Mitch, if you didn't already get that. Um, yeah, I was a student here at CSU. I graduated in the spring of 2020, which means I pretty much didn't graduate. We didn't have a graduation. But in case you don't believe me, I, I brought a couple pictures just to prove that I was a student. You can see Taylor there. And then, yeah, there's little Benny boy. He drove up from, from Boulder. Yeah, guys, I was involved with Stumo as a student. I was a pie cap, God bless. Um, <laughs> love seeing all the pie caps in the front row here. But guys, uh, I, I ended up majoring in journalism, and I minored in history. And I know you guys are looking at me, and you're like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But the reason I asked that question is I, I was thinking of this, like, have you guys ever taken a class that has absolutely nothing to do with your major? I want to hear some examples. Who's taken a class like that? OK. What's, what, what's, what's your example? Oceanography? Insects. Really, Grace, I thought you were studying insects. No. Camping. I got to hear more about that later, Matt. History. Watch it. Well, it's funny, Wyatt, that you say oceanography because I want to tell you about the absolute privilege that I had my sophomore year. I got to take the class oceanography. And you know, it's a deep passion for me. I have a, lot of, uh, a big heart for whales, algae, other ocean things. Guys, I'm kidding. I actually have no care whatsoever for oceanography. And I mean, most of the people in that class don't either, right? You know, the teacher even structures the class knowing that. And I'm, I'm sure you know why, because you've taken it. But if you go to the class and you do the clicker questions, do some of the quizzes, and, and even just kind of do OK on the exams, you can get up to 120% for the total grade on the class. Like, it's, it's literally insane. And so knowing that I am a, a very studious person, um, I put in the minimal effort, because I really don't care about oceanography, right? And so I, I went to class maybe half the, the semester. I, I did some of the quizzes, some of the assignments, and I had a 96 going into finals week. It was, it was kind of insane. And kind of applying that logic that I took all semester, I was like, dude, I, I can just kind of coast into this final, right? You know, it's not going to be that hard. But little did I know. And get, stick with me, you guys, on this one. Since I missed a lot of the classes, I missed the part where she told us how important the final exam was. Not only was it the hardest exam that I had taken in my time in college up to that point, it was also weighted so that if you really bomb this thing, you would drop more than a letter grade below. And so you could probably guess where I'm going with this. I really bombed it. And within the span of two hours, I went from an A plus to a B minus. Not a big deal, B minus. You could get up to 120%, no big deal. But guys, thinking about that, it made me realize, I'm like, dude, the things I don't care about, I'm just not gonna put any effort into. You know, or, or I'm not gonna put all my time and effort into these things that I, I really don't care about. And this is something that's true, I think, with anything in life, right? You know, being in college, we have all these things we're worried about. We got, we got social life, we got, uh, you know, clubs, Greek life, school, work. You know, it's hard to put all this energy into all these things and prioritize all these things. And guys, this is especially true when it comes to our faith. I knew you were wondering, like, how is he going to tie that back in? Well, we, we got there, guys. Uh, this is especially true when it comes to our faith. You know, we might have all these intentions. We, we say these things like, man, I, I want to get in, in God's word. I want to uh, really prioritize reading the Bible, but it doesn't really happen. And I'm speaking from experience here. Like, this is something that is very true about my life coming to Christ and early on in my faith. And you know, this really is true whether you've been walking with God for years, maybe you just made that decision, uh, or maybe you're just checking that out and you don't really know too much about faith. It's always true that if we're not going to priorita prioritize something, you know, it's, it's not going to get done. And so the reality is, guys, you make time for what you care about most. You prioritize what matters most in your life. And so, thinking about this in the context of faith, for many of us in the room, we've recognized that our sin has separated us from God. You know, this very God who cares for us, he's created us in his image, and he ultimately loved us so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for those sins, so that anyone who believes and trusts in him 
could spend eternity in relationship with God. What I just read is essentially the core message of what we believe as Christians, what the Bible teaches, what, what the gospel is. And guys, if that is true, and if we say that we believe in that, man, that should be the most important thing in our life. And, and the reality is, myself included, it, it doesn't always look like that in my life. And so if we're thinking about this as like, man, this should be a big priority. Well, what does that look like? How do I, how do I grow in my ability to prioritize God? We need to look at Scripture. Obviously, God gives us a lot of information, and he tells us that he desires that too. You know, God wants so deeply to be in a relationship with us and to know us. And so let's go back to this idea that we make time for the things that we care about. And so I want us to be thinking about that as we look through some of these scriptures today. I want to go ahead and, and give us three ways that we can prioritize God in our lives. And so the first way that we can do that is by living carefully. Awesome. So we're going to look at a verse or a couple verses in Ephesians chapter 5. And th this is honestly some of my favorite verses that I've been kind of looking at this semester. It's, it's been something that's been on my mind. Um, it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And so to give us a little bit of context in, into what um, Ephesians chapter 5 is, it, it's a lot about Paul the Apostle laying out what a godly life looks like. He's, he's talking a lot about these, these sins we struggle with in our life that, that we look to avoid. He's talking about why we've been called from lightness to darkness. Uh, and, and in light of that, he closes it with this. He says, be very careful then how you live. So I want to kind of camp out on that idea of like, well, what does it mean to be very careful? You're like, dude, I'm a pretty careful guy. Like I, you know, for me, I'm a guy that's concussed myself playing spike ball. So... <laughs> Maybe it doesn't apply as much to me, but um, I, Paul, Paul isn't just talking about this like entry-level carefulness where we're just like, dude, I'm generally careful. No, he's talking about this consideration that is on a deep level of, of preciseness. You know, does that make sense? It's, it's this exactness in which we walk in our lives. You know, this kind of vocabulary that he's using is the same way that you would think about a soldier walking through a minefield. You know, they're not just going to be like skipping through there. I hope. Um, they're going to be walking very carefully so that they don't step on a mine. And in the same way, you think of a surgeon who's performing open heart surgery. They're not just going to go hacking at the dude's chest with a scalpel, I hope. Yeah, I'm, I actually didn't study that, so I don't know if that's proper use of a scalpel. But, yeah, a bush knife. <laughs> um, but guys, it's, it's that idea of, of being very intentional in the way that we live. He goes on to continue talking about this when he says, live not as unwise, but as wise. And again, he's not talking about just like, dude, I'm a smart guy. I understand a lot about this topic. But he's talking about a, a character trait of someone who is super intentional, someone who's thoughtful and purposefully living their life. So Paul is ultimately saying that we need to live with intention. We need to prioritize God and, and be very careful in the way that we pursue him in our lives. You know, he finishes this by saying, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The days are evil. What does that mean? Don't you think that's a little dramatic, Paul? No, I, I don't think at all because, <laughs> guys, the reality is, is everything in the world around us, in the context of faith, think about it. When I've, when I've got my phone, I've got my schedule, my busyness, all these things that are kind of around me, they're ultimately pulling me away from the thing that, that I want to prioritize, the thing that I care about. Like if I'm looking at Mitch Laughlin's schedule, man, I got to get up at a certain time, I got to go to work, I got I to gotta meet with people, I got to do all these things. Those are things of this world that are, are good, but they ultimately pull me away from the thing that matters. So I need to be careful and make the most of the opportunities that I have. And that's so true. You know, again, we, we always have these intentions, these things we say we want to do, but, but we need to prioritize it if we want to make it happen. And so I know you're thinking, Mitch, that's a great speech, but how do I actually practically apply that? What does that look like to apply? And I would just say, make a plan. You know, if you're thinking through, well, what does it look like to make the most of these opportunities? I would say make a game plan. You know, it might look like you saying, hey, I, I have to go to class at, at 9 a.m., on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to get up at 8, 8 a.m. Did I say p.m. or 8 a.m.? 
No, okay. <laughs> if you've got to go to 9 a.m. class, wake up at 8 and get in the Word. Get, in, get time with God. You know, that's making a game plan for what you want to do to, to actually move the ball down the field and prioritize God. Ultimately, we make time for the things that we care about. So as the great theologian once wrote, <laughs> if you had one shot, say it with me if you know it, one opportunity, seize everything you ever wanted, or one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? Thank you. So kind of to clue you guys in, this is my first Stumo talk. And I did, at first I did not tell Taylor I was going to work an Eminem song into it, but uh, here we are. So we made it. But guys, I think what this, this song is saying really applies to the principle that Paul is, is writing about in Ephesians, right? You know, if we have this thing that we care about a ton, that we say we're all in for, this, this one thing, and we have one moment to capture that each day, if, if we have these opportunities to seek after God, to pr- put him first and prioritize him, Are we going to do everything we can to to take advantage of that, or are we just going to let that slip away? And so, as as cheesy as it is to to pull up that song, which is older than some people, I think, in this room, which kind of scares me, um, you know, we have to think about how do we prioritize God in that. So ultimately, in order to prioritize God, we first need to live carefully for Him. And so, thinking about the next way that we can prioritize God in our lives, what that looks like, Uh, It would be to to put him first, to put God first. We're going to look at a a verse in Matthew chapter 6. It's Matthew 6, 33. Some of you guys know this one. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So we heard Matt talk about this uh, a couple weeks ago in the context of, of giving our worries to God and what the Bible says about uh, our worries and our anxieties and how God wants to take those and put, have him be the forefront of those so that he can, he can um, work through that. And so Jesus is speaking to the crowd here in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, and he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. What is he saying here? He's saying, put your mind on the thing that ultimately matters in the long run. You know, college is busy. You know, we're, I've been there. We've all been there. We're in college. There's so much going on, whether that's school, whether that's work. You've got PICAP, bless up again. You've got post-grad things you're worrying about. You've got so much. It, it's stressful, right? You know, there's a lot going on and a lot of good things. You know, it's not always just the bad things, the stressful things, but they can be good things. And so what is Jesus saying in the, when he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness? What is, he, what is he saying when he says, seek first his kingdom? Now, most people, whenever they hear that, they would immediately say, oh, well, he's saying heaven or eternity. Uh, And I would say that's absolutely right. Jesus is saying, focus on the end game. You know, focus on the long term, not this thing that's that's right in front of me. You know, so many times I think we can get in the the mindset of like, dude, this week sucks. It's like life or death. I've got all these things. I'm super stressed out. I know Elijah just had a couple weeks ago had five exams. All five of his classes he had exams in in two days. I was just like, dude, that is... You should drop out of school. And um, <laughs> No, but it was, it was really, really cool to see him take this verse and, and apply that. He, he was intentional about prioritizing God. And, and, I mean, you can ask him about it. it. It went well. His anxiety was lifted. He was focused on the thing that mattered in the long run. On the other side of that, we, we look at his righteousness. What does it mean to seek his righteousness? So we see righteousness in the Bible a lot of times is, is talking about a character or a character trait of somebody. Most of the time, looking at God, in this verse, it's looking at God's character of righteousness. And so when we think about that, that is, that is ultimately like the holiness, the standard that God lives at, uh, what we're called to live like, you know, as we're pursuing to live like Jesus. What would Jesus do? Bracelets. Wish I had one. If you know where to get one, please actually let me know. I, I do really want one. But that's the same idea, right? We're seeking after his righteousness. I can tell you from personal experience that it is very hard to intentionally prioritize God if I'm living the complete opposite that Jesus wants me to live. And I think we all know what that means for ourselves. You know, if I'm, if I'm doing these things I know are wrong, I, I'm finding it really hard to prioritize my time with God. I'm, right, I'm finding it really hard to prioritize Jesus. And it, it takes 
seeking his righteousness and pursuing that first to really gain that relationship and build that relationship with God. Guys, this is super true when I think of my story. I, I came to college because, you know, that's what you do when you graduate high school. For me, that's, that's what my family expected. And, and I thought, man, I'm going to figure it out once I'm there. Came in, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, didn't know where I wanted to end up. And ultimately, it left me just kind of bouncing around from the things that I thought were going to bring that fulfillment, things I thought were going to be the ultimate source of that satisfaction. You know, a lot of that was just diving deeper into the party scene, getting involved with my fraternity in kind of all the wrong ways that I never thought I would be doing. You know, it looked like trying to please people with the grades I got. Um, ultimately, I just found myself back and forth in this kind of whirlwind of, of lostness and, and purposelessness. And it wasn't until the end of my sophomore year that I, I finally realized God had just been putting it on my heart to go all the way in, to prioritize him in my life. And, you know, it was the summer of, of 2018 that, that I ultimately made the decision to follow Christ. And, and I finally learned what it looked like to prioritize him. You know, I, I came back and was like, dude, I'm actually going to make an effort to get in the word, make an effort to spend time with God daily, uh, change the way my life looks because it's important. It's something that God cares about. It's something that I care about. And guys, I, I can confidently, I work for Stumo now, so you know something changed. Um, <laughs> but I can confidently say that, that I was given that purpose, that peace and fulfillment that, that I'd been longing for so long. Once I, once I realized that, man, it just takes that leap all the way in, the, the prioritizing him first, putting him all the way at the front of my life. And so guys, again, we come back to this idea, we make time for what we care for. And so the final way that we want to look at of how we can prioritize God practically in our life comes down to this. It comes down to renewing our mind. It comes down to renewing our mind. We're going to look at Romans 12, verse 2. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So guys, I want to, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier, like the idea that the things around us are influencing us, right? Again, that's something I think we can all agree on, especially being in college. You know, you're influenced by our friends, the social media we look at, the news we see. Um, you know, it, it, it's a huge aspect of our life, and this is exactly what Paul is talking about when he says, do not conform to these patterns of the world. And I'll be honest, it's the easy thing to do. It is so easy for me to walk into to a place and see a lot of other people doing something and then them saying, like, yeah, dude, this is, this is kind of the way to do it, and just follow. And I, I would agree that, that that's what a lot of us tend to do subconsciously when we look at the way the world works and, and we see that in our own lives. And so some ways that I see these, these patterns fleshed out is, is in an, the way the world paints relationships, right? In college, you think, man, I got to hook up with that girl before I can, you know, start asking her on a date. I got to do this before I can do that. Or the way we approach media. You know, a lot of times when we're stressed or anxious, we'll just go binge media or, or go to our, um, you know, news outlet to, to, to comfort ourselves when, when it really we should be taking that to God. And lastly, just thinking about our appearance. You know, the way we act, the way we do things. It's, it's hugely influenced by the things of this world. And that's exactly what Paul is saying that we must not conform to. Instead, what he says is that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Does anyone have a guess at what renewing means? Ben? Starting fresh. Starting fresh, that's good. Yeah, I actually didn't have that in my notes to ask, but I just really wanted to ask Ben a question. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, that's a, exactly right. It's, it's changing the way that we think. It's, it's changing the way we act and becoming new. We know that when we accept Christ, we are made new in him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that. You know, it's like, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. You know, that's the decision we make. Or when we make that decision, that, that's what happens in our lives. But on the practical sense, it takes us intentionally prioritizing God to see the changes fleshed out in our life, the, the changes, the response on our behalf to what God is doing. And that comes as a direct result from the time we spend with God. And I want you guys to hear that. It, it's a direct result from the time that we spend with God. You know, we heard Taylor give a talk a couple weeks ago about the power of the Bible, the validity of the Bible, 
how it's not just this moral handbook of like good things to do, bad things you definitely don't want to do, but it's literally God's word given to us that we can read, that we can, that we can process and meditate on and memorize. And that has the power to transform our lives. And I, I mean, I could probably ask a ton of people in here about how the Bible has impacted their life, and they would probably say that, like, man, day one I started reading it, a year in, my life looks so much different. And that is just the power of God's word to transform our, ourselves. So practically, guys, we can prioritize God by renewing our mind, making it a priority to read God's word and apply it to our lives. So now I want to actually invite my friend Paul up to hear just a little bit about, you know, what that has looked like in his, his life, how he has, has seen prioritizing God in his life. So why don't you guys give it up for Paul? What's up, y'all? Um, <laughs> my name's Paul. I'm a senior here at CSU, also in a Fidel. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over my story um, in terms of just sort of how I've come to prioritize God in my life and kind of what that means um, and what led me there. Um, so just coming to college, I considered myself a believer, but my life did not show that at all. Uh, I kind of thought that I could put God sort of just in a box. I could show up to church every once in a while, call myself a Christian, and I'd be all good with that. Um, and what kind of led me to realize that wasn't true is just in college, similar to what Mitch is talking about, I really just kind of went after whatever I thought would fulfill me. Um, so to start, like I thought, oh, if I get really good grades in college, then I'll have success in that, and that will give me a lot of satisfaction. So I did that, that didn't work. Um, I said, all right, well, maybe I need to get in a good, committed relationship with someone, and I did that. That didn't work at all. Um, <laughs> and uh, just moving forward through my freshman year, I just kind of went after one thing after the other. I thought, oh, maybe I just need to party harder, so I did that. I thought, oh, well, maybe I need to join a fraternity, and that will really put me in a place where I'll feel satisfied, and that didn't work either. And it was just one thing after the other, and gradually I just kept feeling empty, I kept feeling more broken um, and just realizing that um, I was honestly sadder than I'd ever been um, and felt really lost. That summer, uh, the next summer going into sophomore year, I went on a mission trip and decided that, I mean, heck, if I'm going to be serving God every day, I should decide if I'm really about this or not. Um, so I decided, yes, I want to live my life for Christ, um, but I didn't really know what that meant. so. Going into the sophomore year, I fell exact right back into the same sin struggles I had, back into the party scene, basically just fell on my face, literally at formal. So <laughs> I decided that some things needed to change. Um, and one thing that led me to that was STEMO. I had sort of been involved in STEMO, and I decided that I should go to SMC, which is not something I was that interested in, but I just realized that something needed to change and I didn't know what it was. So I went to SMC, and that's where I really realized what living your life for Christ is, and it's making him, as Mitch talked about, the priority every day in your life, um, getting your satisfaction with your relationship with God, not your relationship with others or with girls or in what your parents think of you or what job you get after college. That's not what it's about. Um, and so just with that, I, I realized that I needed to prioritize God every day. I needed to live my life for him. And then going to SMC, I met other people who were in the same spot, and they wanted to do the same things. Um, and they held me accountable to that, which was amazing. And then since then, since sophomore year, going into spring semester, I started reading the Bible again. I started getting the word every day. I joined a church surrounded by other Christians, and I finally felt satisfaction and just fulfillment and just having a relationship with God and living for him every day in, day out. Um, and I just challenge all of you to, to do the same. So, thanks. I want to give that to Matt. I want to give that to Matt. Awesome. That's great, man. I think, again, it's just so important for us to recognize that God is, is the ultimate priority that we should have in our life. You know, when we think of what it means to prioritize just the things around us. We, we need to live intentionally for God. We need to know Him and seek after Him. 
And, and just to revisit the things that we talked about, we, we need to prioritize God by living carefully. We need to prioritize him by seeking him first and ultimately prioritize him by just renewing our mind, spending time with God and building that relationship because that's how we, we see that actually change in our life. So I wanted to leave you guys just with a couple applications to take into this week as well as into uh, finals and then holiday. I mean, we got a lot of time where it's easy to, to kind of let those priorities slip. Things are going to be changing. And so uh, I want to help you guys just take away from this talk and, and actually practically do this. So the first thing we're going to look at is make a plan. You know, we talked about this at the beginning, but it is so important to think of like, well, what is my winter break going to actually look like? What is Thanksgiving break going to look like? You know, is that funny, Gabe? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry, I thought I did something wrong there. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Gabe. I didn't mean that. <laughs> sorry, man. Um, <laughs> he just really likes Thanksgiving. That's the funny thing. But guys, think about what your, your schedule is going to look like. How are you going to prioritize God in that? You know, are you going to, uh, to, to make a game plan of, of what to read or, or when you're going to spend time with God? Think about these things, guys. It's really, really important. The next one would be read God's Word. As if I haven't said that enough. I think, again, it's just one of the most important ways that we can build that relationship with God and know our Creator. And so I would say just start in John 1. We've mentioned this before, but I, I love it so much because you get a picture of who Jesus is. Uh, you get to see just His life and, and death and resurrection and kind of the purpose that, that we are called to live for now. And then lastly, guys, I would say go to SMC. I know this is something you guys haven't. You guys heard about SMC yet? Right? Sorry, what's um, it's yeah. Stumo Conference is literally what it's for. But guys, SMC is one of the best ways you can prioritize your walk with God over the, the break. I mean, what do we have six weeks in the middle of winter break, right? Is that right? Anyone know? Six weeks? Guys, that is a long time to be away from your normal schedule, your normal routine. And it's a great way... It might, I mean, it might feel like a risk to kind of send it to, to Dallas with thousands of other college students to learn about God, but it is the best risk you could possibly take if you are looking to prioritize God in your life. I cannot overstate how important this was in my own walk with God. I went my sophomore year, uh, right as I was kind of in the middle of just discovering who God was and, and on that path to, to give my life to Christ, I, I was wondering what the heck is SMC about? And that is where I saw for the first time Students just like me, asking good questions, uh, you know, they were in fraternities, they were in Greek life, they were struggling with a lot of the same things that I was, but they were looking to prioritize God in their life. And that was huge for me in taking those next steps. So guys, can't say it enough, consider going to SMC, you're not going to want to miss it. And so with that, guys, I just want to remind us just that idea, you will make time for the things that you care about. So I want us to, to just think about that as we go into, into this week. But I'll go ahead and close this in prayer. God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for, for everyone for being here. God, that is a step to prioritizing you and, and understanding who you are. Uh, God, we pray that um, you would just be at work in the, in the lives of everyone as we're, we're heading into uh, holidays, as we're heading into the, the end of the school semester. God, would you just uh, help everyone in their, their walk to grow closer to you um, each and every day. And so, again, thank you so much for this time, and it's in your name I pray. Amen.